Let's bring in retired Green Beret and MMA fighter Tim Kennedy. Tim, great to see you. We're deep in debt, $32 trillion, spiraling down a hole, borrowing more than $5 billion every day. We need to make some choices here. And I choose America. Yeah, I mean, you, you can't see America first right now, but um, it is definitely a sentiment that, that resonates with a lot of people. Um, you know, the, the, the idea that we have people in Hawaii that are receiving $700 per family unit after everything in their life burns to the ground um, for whatever the reasons, whatever their causes, not, let's not get conspiratorial here, but very questionable. And then we have, of course, the government coming forward and asking for yet more money um, as we're shipping tens of billions of dollars overseas to fight in a proxy war with, of course, one of our enemies, but an endless war that sees no, see, sees no end in sight. Um, th this is unsustainable. Tim, I want to get your take on this. U.S. Strategic Command is defending a move to host a former Iranian diplomat at a 2023 symposium. But here's the thing. This guy apparently kept close ties with the Iranian regime and even once last year bragged about the regime's efforts to assassinate American leaders. Former Dir Director of National Intelligence Dan Ratcliffe says Congress needs to take a closer look at this. Watch. The United States government paying for sec Secret Service security details for officials like Mike Pompeo and others who have been threatened by this regime. And at the very same time, the U.S. government, through strategic command, um, inviting uh, those responsible for making those threats and cheering on those threats to be their keynote speaker. It, it's, it's absolutely uh, indefensible, uh, and Congress should demand an explanation. That was John Ratcliffe. Tim, you know, I look at this and think you want to get info from the guy, you want to question him, that's one thing. But to invite him to a symposium like he's an honored guest seems just wrong to me. Yeah, I mean, it, it also validates his position. Um, let's be clear about that position. Iran is an enemy of ours. Uh, strategically, they were sending foreign fighters to fight us both in Iraq and Afghanistan. They were supplying the people that we were fighting with weapons. Most of the munitions that were used against American troops in Afghanistan and Iraq were provided by Iran. Now, the man that has been bragging about assassinating or, or a regime that has been trying to assassinate Americans is being welcomed uh, mm. and, and given a platform. Uh, it's, it's embarrassing. And, um, you know, if we have a lot of things backwards right now, giving, giving somebody a pulpit to, to speak from after they have tried and, and praised trying to kill Americans, mm -hmm. I just have no appetite for that. Tim, I look at this speaker, though. This is a sign. The Biden administration is clearly sending the U.S. a sign of how they view Iran. The fact that $6 billion was unfrozen in funds for Iran, that five Americans were freed, you know, that, that ransom paid. Iran's been able to boost its oil production to three and a half million barrels per day. Tanker tracking services have reported that Iran's exports are now uh, moving higher and higher. They've been able to move oil around a great deal more easily. And Republicans suspect that the Biden administration has reached a secret nuclear understanding with Tehran after that payout for those prisoners. Yeah, D Dagan, you're, you're really hitting the nail on the head there. And um, it's, it's one that, let's not forget, under the Obama administration, we sent a plane full of cash over there. Um, they are a strategic en enemy yeah. of ours, and they have been for 20 years. Um, to treat them any other way, I, I think, is a disgrace to everyone that wears the uniform. Mm. Um, we have to treat our enemies accordingly. I realize there's opportunity for diplomatic relations and for us to grow and maybe find other solutions to our problems. But giving somebody a position, a praised position to preach from, nah, mm -hmm. no, nope, that's a bridge too far. Yep. Tim, so I saw this on your Instagram. Instagram flagged a bunch of your posts over weapons concerns, and they also muted your account to non-followers. Uh, these were just, dis if we have video of it, you posted some of the videos of you were showing a knife a, uh, yes, you have mm. firearms. Guess what? We have a badass, here's your knife, a badass oh. Second Amendment. But they, they essentially censored you 
but Instagram at the same time allowed a network of pedophiles to breed and spread for right. God knows how long. That's Instagram. Yeah, it's uh, it, it's so disingenuous and, and laughable. And I think at this point, the American people are just realizing that tech companies really don't care about anybody in America. Um, you know, when the founding fathers in 1776 are like, what should we write? First, they said that we should have the freedom of speech, which they are directly attacking with every one of our posts. They're silencing opposing views, and they're only letting people that align with them philosophically have any voice or platform whatsoever. So the first thing our founding fathers said was, Let's let people say what they want. The second thing was give them a gun, right? You can legally own a gun. The first and second thing, the two most important things for us to do, freedom of speech and then have firearms. And here we have Instagram that is not just silencing a group that they don't want to hear about. Mm. Then they're doing it because of the second thing that we put in the Constitution, which is that it is our unalienable right to have these things. So, man, Meta, they, they're going to have to realize the pendulum swings mm. both ways. And they have forced that pendulum to swing way too far. Tim, it's a great point. I got to say, though, when you post your workout videos, let me know, because I think those were the most impressive guns and everything I saw right there today. <laughs> Thank you, Brian. I, I hope so. But uh, I try. But, man, I, I do love that Second Amendment. And uh, yeah. we have to fight for it. I think we have very been very lax in our ability to fight for the First and Second Amendment. And it's time for Americans yep. to start getting back up. The uh, man who is responsible for us having that Bill of Rights, uh, Patrick Henry, he was first governor of Virginia. Also our call to freedom, uh, liberty or death. I am on the board of directors, Tim, at his last home and burial mm. place. It's in my hometown and I tell everybody, you go and pay your respects to that man. Amen, amen. Great to see you, my friend, Tim Kennedy. Thank you. Thank you.